and talk your word. Let your word come with power, with authority, to open our eyes, to help us see you better, to show us mysteries that are hidden. Oh God, we give you praise. Amen. I want to thank the authority of uh, Calvary Baptist, the uh, purpose-driven new chapel, for giving me the chance to be here. Amen. Okay, so my wife was right. She said, I'll be disappointed with the... <laughs> so, we thank God. Let's op open our Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. I want you to know that the Spirit of God is here. Amen. As you are sitting down there, you, you know, it's like an antenna. Eh? Radio waves are here. I mean, if you tune in a radio right now, you get one of these FM stations. So that's the Spirit of God. If you tune in rightly, you hear. Amen. So tune in. Those of us, the seers and the prophets and the prophetess. And you know, I'm, I'm speaking. Uh, those of you who can hear, tune in. Huh? Let God speak through you. Amen. Polukwe, <laughs> you are warned. No pressure. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. I read. It says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Verse 16 says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Mm. 17, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and height. Hmm. 19. It says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Verse 20. And it says, on Now unto him who is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You know, I have a brother and he came here today and I think if I remember correctly, the last time he was invited to preach, he preached on this same scripture. It's amazing, eh? God just spoke to me. This is a scripture my brother's preached on, and I'm also here preaching the same scripture. So it's prophetic. <laughs> Amen. So Paul, let's look at let's look at the background, uh, the outline. Can we can we see the outline? The outline is just simple. I'm just giving a background to the scripture. And then, you know, Paul's prayers, the prayer that Paul prayed. That's one of them. And then I, I emphasize, you know, each, each prayer. And then I conclude. Nothing complicated. Very simple. Now, this is not the only prayer. The next slide, please. Okay, yeah, so it's okay. This is not the only prayer, uh, maybe the previous one, that, you know, uh, the Apostle Paul prayed. Essentially, there are like five prayers in, in the New Testament that the Apostle Paul prayed. And then two of them are in Ephesians. One in Philippians. Uh, one in Colossians. And one in uh, First Thessalonians and another in Second Thessalonians. So, that's it. The next slide, please. And then, if we think about these prayers, we realize that Paul must have been a man of prayer. Okay, if you, if you see how he prayed 
to the churches or for the churches. He must, be, he must have been a man of prayer. And then, uh, thinking about this particular scripture that I read in Ephesians chapter 3. The Bible says that in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, the King James says, Do not add unto the word, nor diminish it. So, the fact that the prayer is in the Bible means that it's important. God wanted us to know. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. I mean, God could have put anything here, but he put us here. So, it means that it's important that we know about this prayer. Amen? So then the prayer must be very necessary for us that we know about it. What is it about? You see, the Bible is like uh, the next slide. I don't know whether the picture will come uh, clearly. It's like a Swiss army knife. It has everything. When you're going on a camp, it has everything. And then you can, you know, it's a multi-purpose device. You can use it for many things. That's how the Bible is. Okay, let's, let's skip. Can you sp skip to the next two slides? Paul's wishes. Yeah. So, the first one says that they will be strengthened with might in the inner man or woman. I made it. You know, these days, you cannot say man, man like that. Eh? <laughs> so, I made it woman. It's not in the Bible like woman, but I put it there. I mean, God understands. When the Bible says man, it, it just refers to, you know. Yeah. So, that we will be strengthened, all of us, those of us here. God will strengthen us with strength inside of us. But, and then the second point is that Christ will dwell in our hearts by faith. That's uh, the verse 17. It says Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. Okay? And then the third point says that, that you know, I mean, the church of Ephesus, they will comprehend and know the love of Christ. See, it's important that you know the love of Christ. You know, the doc was here, Dr. Julia was here and was talking about grace. God has already given him grace, but it's important that you know what it is and then tap into it. There are two different things. God giving it is one thing, and you working on it and tapping into it is another thing. It's, it's amazing. God won't come and put the food in your mouth to eat. You have to, you see, when he rained manna, what happened? He didn't rain manna inside their, their shelters. Okay, so then you wake up, oh, tell God has rained manna, let me eat. No. You will have to walk a distance. God has rained food, though, but you have to walk a distance. And if you, after bringing it, what happens? It doesn't stay overnight. <laughs> the next day, you have to go again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, the grace of God is given to us, but you have to do something to get it. It doesn't come in your bedroom, lying down, oh, God's grace, God's grace. No. It does not happen like that. You see, we have all these kinds of weird preaching going on. If you are not careful, you won't understand the Bible properly. Verse, the four says that, that they might be filled with all fullness of God. Very deep things. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm the one qualified to, you know, to help you understand these things. I, some of them I don't understand myself. Very deep things from the Apostle Paul. But may God help us to understand. Amen. So let's lay emphasis on it. The verse 16 says, that God, look into your Bible, that God, the Father, will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened by might, by his spirit, in the inner man or woman, in your inner person. As you sit down, there's somebody inside of you, your spirit. Okay? Now, this is timely because now these days we put emphasis on what comes on our body. People would prefer to go for a Sunday morning jogging and go and eat a mutu and skip church. Okay? You know, it, I mean, it's important that you know, you exercise and, and, and you know, you, you are not all diseased up because of lack of exercise. It's important. But it shouldn't replace what you do for your inner man or woman. Are you hearing me? I mean, if you follow this fashion, fashion, whatever, people, I one time was in France, and then, you know, I was working with my colleagues, and then all of a sudden, I heard a shout. Ah! Somebody, you know, I heard girls shouting. Ah! I thought somebody had died. I turned back, 
it was a new shoe. They were looking inside behind the, you know, they, were, they, had, they had seen shoes inside a store, you know, behind a glass. And they had, it was like, I was like, oh my God. Shoes! Making people scream like this. I was shocked. I will never forget that day. Hey! I couldn't believe it. So, so people have, they pay more attention to what comes on, you know, under their feet and what comes on their body. I'm not saying come to church all, you know, looking on camps on all that. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Ask God for wisdom. I'm not telling you to come to church, you know, when you can dress up properly, you come up and then you are looking all kinds of, I will lay hands on you. <laughs> if I see it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that even as, you see, the Bible says that you let's go on. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I wrote it. The supporting scriptures. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper. Even us. Can you continue? Even us. So you prosper as long as your soul, the inner person, prospers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because what comes on you is it's controlled by what is inside. If it has no foundation, a time is coming, you will take it off. Nobody will ask you to You automatically take them off. Because there's no basis holding it there. There's no basis. Your inner person has no foundation. So if you, if you wrongfully get them on, they will, they will go automatically. They will just go. It will go. Okay? And then we look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And the Bible says, For bodily exercise profited little. <laughs> that was poor. It says, You can go, you know, Sunday morning, jog to every mountain, and come back all sweaty and all that. It profited little. <laughs> it's not, listen, it's not saying it's not good, though. That's not what I'm saying. It is good. Okay? If you don't exercise plenty and you eat, there's this, there's this, uh, this experiment that was done in the U.S., the guy wanted to prove that McDonald's is not good. So he kept eating McDonald's. It was like a, an experiment. And then he bloated up. Okay? No exercise. He got up from bed, eat McDonald's, go and sleep. He, you see? That's it. You, you, you fall sick. The doctor is here. She can tell you. You know in your science books. If you don't exercise, it's not good. But the Bible says that bodily exercise. First Timothy, you can open your Bible and read. First Timothy chapter 4 verse, two, verse 8. It says, for bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. All things. All things. So bodily exercise profits only your body. Are you what I'm saying? It profits only your body, but godliness. It's profitable unto all things. Everything. Including your body. That's why you should pay more attention to that. What is coming from inside of you? It's very important. Very, very important. Now, the second point, the prayer point is that that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Say faith. Faith is so crucial, people. Faith is crucial. I cannot tell you how much, I cannot overemphasize how much faith is so important. Christ should dwell in your heart by faith. That is why in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, the Bible says that keep your heart with all diligence. For what? Out of it comes all the issues of life. Your heart is very important. Okay? Your heart in relation to how you accept Jesus is so crucial. Very crucial. Okay? In, in John chapter 14, verse 20, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. John 14, 23, it says that Jesus promises his abiding presence to all who love him. If you love God, Jesus says he will come with his father and make his abode with you. So, you have to accept that as I believe Jesus, he has come to live with me. You have to accept it. it. It's not something that is going to come automatically. You have to make an effort to understand this. Okay? How he does, he does this is what? Through his spirit. We all know. 
God lives in us through his spirit. That's why in 1 John 4, 13, it says, Hereby we know that he, that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he had given us his spirit. So we dwell in God because God has given us his spirit. And that is what you need to believe. You need to believe this, that God's spirit is inside of you. You know, many people have troubles understanding what their ministry is. Many people have, you know, they are not sure of themselves. They don't know whether God has really called. You have to believe it. It's so important, eh? You have to believe it. I told people that when Jesus had come and wanted to start his ministry, the Spirit, take him, uh, the Spirit took him to the desert. He came back. After the fasting, he came back. And then he went to the temple and they gave him the book of Isaiah. And then he put open to Isaiah chapter 61 and said, The Spirit of God is upon me. For he has what? Anointed me. And then the people were confused. So Jesus was telling them that this is what God has made me. If you are a Christian or in a ministry or you are a leader or whatever, you have to accept the responsibility that this is what you are. Otherwise you struggle with your own self. And people will see it that you are struggling. And because of that they will undermine your authority. Spiritually, secularly, whatever. Anything. You have to accept. If you've been given a position in, in your office, you have to accept that this is my position. That is why you cannot tell me to sign the check because I won't do it. I know what I, what I am in this place. Okay? You have to understand your position. It's so important. So crucial. Okay? And then God's grace, he has, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we talked about grace a lot here today. God's grace is his part. You see, it, it's a relationship with him, with God. And his part is that he has given you the grace. Your, your part is what? Your faith aspect. You have to accept that God has given me this. Otherwise, you struggle. You won't you, you know. You, 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 you won't be sure. So grace is God's part. And faith is your part. Amen. Let's look at how grace is like. It's like this picture. I don't know whether you can see it. It's called a grace cafe. You go to a restaurant. And then... The waiter or waitress comes up to you with a menu and says that you may order anything that is on the menu. The owner has already paid for it all. That is grace. God's grace. I mean, imagine yourself. You are moving pick or whatever. Now, Jonathan, can you be on your feet and raise your hands? As you, as God, as, as you continue to, you know, like share God's word through these pictures. God says he's going to give you ideas for your next level. You will not struggle to do what you do in the name of Jesus. Take it, take it, take it, take it. It's yours. That's a grace. Amen. So that's God's grace. You go to a restaurant and then there is menu. And you can, I mean, I hear no bit me, Eddie. And he says that order. For it has already been paid. That is it. But, but if you don't order, the food won't come up. You see? So that's the faith part. If you do not order, you sit down and the, the, the waiter or waitress will be confused. I mean, they will, they will be shocked. What is this guy doing here? That's it. I'm going to put my hair. Sorry, I'm going to That is it. That is grace. And that is faith. Okay? It's so important that you understand this. Now, you see, Hebrews 11 says, 11 says, says that, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can come here, sing, and dance, and, and you know, pay all the fat tithes. If you do not have faith, you are not pleasing God. I'm not saying it. It's in the Bible. If you don't do all these things with faith, you do it. If you pay your tithe because you think that church needs money, you have already failed. Okay, you, you think that uh, the pastor has to be paid and... No, but that's not it. You do it out of faith. You believe that God is. And he's a rewarder of them that what? So faith is so crucial. Let's look at another in Hebrews 12. It says, looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher. Jesus is the author. And you, look, you need to look up to him. Now, there's this even very scary one. It says, Romans 14, 20, it says, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. When I saw it, I was shocked. Hey, we've been sinning here plenty, Papa. 
anything you don't you do without faith is sin. That, it's not me. That's what the Bible is saying. If you do anything in this church or in the body of Christ, and it is not out of faith, you are sinning big time. Big time. So faith is very important. Amen. The, the third prayer point says that that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to understand with all, all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Jonathan, do you know that when the man, when the, when the pastor asked you to come before, he was telling you a parable. That's what God is saying. Charlie, God, God loves you. When you stood, the all night, eh, when you stood, stood in front, it was a parable. You and Amma. I don't know what it means, but you figure it out. Amen. 4D love. A four-dimensional kind of love. 4D. The, the bread. The bread says that it's you know a love that stretches it stretches from age to age it's unmeasurable the love of god it stretches from age to age the length the love of god goes from everlasting to everlasting the depth is the love goes beyond the deepest pit of hell okay and then the height is the love reaches higher than the heavens it's in, infinite that's the love of god i don't know what it means I don't know. But that is the love of God. I believe it by faith. I believe it by faith. I believe it by faith. That phrase is in two parts. And the second one says, To know the love of God, which passes knowledge. <laughs> Charlie. It's not the kind of love you've been seeing on, uh, what's the name? Uh, Marie Cruz and, and all kinds of weird soap operas. That's not the kind of love the Bible is talking about. It says it is a kind of love that goes beyond knowledge. But it's contradictory. I mean, if it, is, if it goes beyond knowledge, why should we know about it? Isn't it amazing? Paul says that we should know the love that goes beyond knowledge. <laughs> okay? And then I found this thing in Songs of Songs, chapter 8, verse. It says, Set me as a seal upon thy heart. Okay, and it goes on and says, as a seal upon thy arm. For love is as strong as death. Do you see why Jesus died on the cross? His love is strong. To pull him to the cross. Listen, I, you know, there, are, there, are, there have been all kinds of versions of uh, the, the, you know, the life of Jesus and some are trying to say, even now they are saying that, okay, I mean uh, there's so much blood in it and all that let's cut off the blood, I understand that some people are rewriting the Bible and replacing the blood with, you know, something liquid but not the blood <laughs> because it, it's, it's, not, it's not nice to talk about blood, blood, blood but Jesus shed a lot of blood on the cross go and do uh, you know, these days Google, you can go sit behind Google and type how crucifixion was done in the past. It, wa it wasn't anything that you would ever wish to do. Because the Bible says that curse is any man that is put on a tree. If you are on a tree, you are cursed. So you are condemned. You are no more human. Jesus' love was as strong to go to that extent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? His love was as strong to go to that extent. His love was strong. That is why Romans chapter 8 verse 10 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? And then I like the King James because it says who. And then after saying who, it goes on to say, Shall, you know, confusion or persecution. So all these things are, personal, you know, they've been personified. Confusion has been personified. Okay, and, 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 and let's read the scripture. I like it. Let's read it. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. So a tribulation is a who, eh? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. 
And then verse 10 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You see? The love of Jesus is so strong, these things in life, they are not able to take us away from him. Aren't you happy that you have this love? Oh, show by hand if you, love, if, if you understand and know this love of Jesus. Okay, but knowing about it is different. And knowing it for yourself is also different. If you know about the love of Christ, you know that your, your, your redundancy is only what? For a moment. You know that your being unemployed is not going to go on forever. When you know the love of, of Christ, you know that your sickness is not going to take you to your death. If only you want it. Knowing the love of Christ, you know that nothing can push you away from Christ. His love is so deep. It's so strong. His love is strong. Very strong. Amen. That's why in John 15 verse 30 it says, Greater love had no man than this. That what? A man laid down his life for his friends. Jesus' love was greater than all. Amen. So, when I was thinking about it, I realized that there will never be a time in our Christian work when one can say that I have arrived. I know everything about the love of Christ. I know everything about, you know, I've experienced all the love, the possible ways God can love. You cannot. It, because it's a four-dimensional kind of love. I told you earlier. You cannot, there's not going to be a time that ah, today, dear, this is the last kind of love I've seen from God. God, you are so good. Thank you. It's not going to be like that. It is always going to be something new. I don't know about you, but you see, God has always shown up in ways that I didn't even expect. Weird, I mean, I wasn't even expecting God to show up. And then he shows up. Because he loves me. <laughs> because of his love. Because of God's love. He shows up. Not because I pay my tithe. I hear what I'm saying. Not because I do all things right. Not because... I, I'm always in his ways. Not because I have not had bad thoughts in my mind ever. The love of God is so strong. God's love is strong. God's love is strong. Amen. But as I'm saying this, I mean, you have, you have to exercise faith to understand. If God's love is strong and you do not have faith to know this, it's useless. It's not going to have any impact. Let's see the, the next picture. Let's see how faith is. Oh, Charlie. My wife was right again. You see, faith is like this. Like uh, you are sitting at the table and then your mom is cooking some turkey or chicken. And then the one looking, looking here, that's Ophuluque. So the rest are looking... You know, they know that mom is coming. It's coming from the oven. So they are looking mom's way. So they know that mom is coming with a turkey. But you, Ophuluko, you are looking at your plate. And you are complaining that you are hungry. <laughs> Ozovo, forgive me. <laughs> okay, you look at the plate. You, you cannot see mom coming with a turkey. So you, you, and your stomach is churning and rumbling and all that. And you are complaining. That is fake. You look at... You know, mom coming from the kitchen with the, with the turkey. And then you say that, okay, the, the, the turkey will be here very soon. That is fake. You see, that is fake. That is fake. That is fake. Amen. Let's go to the last one. It says, in the fullness of God. It says, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. All fullness. Let's look at what a, a prayer that Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, verse 2. It says, O righteous Father. The world had not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known thee, that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So it's making the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit inside you so, I don't know, so full. I don't know what full means. I don't know what full means. The fullness of God coming to a point where you say, I am persuaded. Look at Paul. He says, for I am persuaded. Okay, nothing moves you. Look at, look at the three Hebrew boys. They say, oh king, 
we are not careful to reply you with this answer that you can send us into the fire and the God that we serve will what? Will come and save us. But even if he does not, I like that part. <laughs> God will come and save us. Of course, God can do all things. You come and save us. But even if he does not. So the fullness of God is not looking at what happens around you. Okay? Like being moved by whether you get a contract or not. It is beyond that. Even if I don't get a contract, God is still God. Even if my mom does not get healed of her disease, God is still God. Even if I do not get a school. Even if. Amen. Another way that the fullness of God comes is like saving us from sin. Look at this picture again. It's, you know, the guy has been hurt badly and says, hey, I wouldn't open that door if I were you. Because behind that door is a charging bull waiting to just, you know, trample over you and kill you. He says, I wouldn't open that door. When you are full of God, you know that this door, I shouldn't open it. You don't struggle with sin. That's what I'm saying. You don't struggle to do what is right. You know that this is right and I need to do it. If you are taking bribe, you know that this is bribe. If you are a Christian and you do not feel anything when you are sinning, check yourself. Stop using the tag Christian. You are not. You should know that this is a sin. You should know. The Holy Spirit must shake karate. See, the Holy Spirit will tell you that you shouldn't do this. What you are doing is wrong. What you are doing is wrong. And he comes in all forms. You will you, you, you be shocked. He comes in all forms. Yesterday, my wife was quite busy in the kitchen. And I was behind my computer. And apparently, God didn't like this. And uh, I heard a voice clear. It says, go and pound the palm. <laughs> But you don't, you don't know the funny thing. When I told my wife that God says I should come, she says, eh? God says, go and sit down. <laughs> it's funny, eh? So God comes up in very many. He says, go and pound. Because I was busily, you know, you know, compiling a few things. God says, go and pound it. But that is God. He speaks. In, sometimes God speaks and you think that it's not God, right? You think it's yourself. It's not yourself. It's God. You think, oh, it's my body. It's not your body. It's God talking to you. Get up. And pray. Okay? It's not your body. It's not your body. He, he talks. And the relationship God has with us, it's, 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 it's amazing. He likes to be part of all our things. It's not some things. It's an amazing relationship. He wants to be part in everything you do. It's strange, eh? God, who is sovereign, who is everything, he wants to be part of your daily life. Everything you do. Everything. So that's it. When you are full of God, that's it. The sin is gone. See, another one. When you are full of God, you know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. You know where to run to. You see the people down there chasing and uh, looking for your life. You know exactly where you dwell. You see, the Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place. Secret place secret. You know where you dwell. You, you are confident that God is with me. You can't do me no harm. You see, that is why you don't pray only when you are traveling to your village and you are in a car praying. It shall lose right here. You are fearful. God is with you. Okay? You only pray when, when, when you think that uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Some, some of the excuses people give sometimes is so funny. But when the fullness of God is in you, you know. You know exactly what you are doing. You know where you dwell in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the last one. See, my preaching is not long. How much time do I have? Was over? Five minutes. Let's look at the last one. The oasis. You know, there's a kingdom of God and then the world the world is like a desert. And then the kingdom of God is like you know, a table that has been set in the middle of a desert. And then he's asking, do you want to join us? You know exactly where God's table is. Amen. 
Now the last thing that Paul says is now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. Now it means that this prayer that Paul prayed, it is only God that can answer. <laughs> the fullness of God, what is it? What is it? What is the fullness of God? It is only God that can answer this. So he says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above, abundantly above all things we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. That power is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So according to the Holy Spirit that is in you, unto the church, be him, uh, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's it. God is able to, I don't know about you, but I yearn for God's presence every day of my life. Even when I feel him, I yearn for more. I yearn for him when I don't feel him. It's not that like he's gone, but I don't feel him. And I want to feel him all the time. But sometimes, you know, you, you don't feel like God is there. But he's still there. I yearn for him all the time. I don't know about you. Close your eyes. You've, 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 you've prayed about grace. The grace of God is here. If you want to know God better, his grace is available. Amen? His grace is available. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Say, God, I want to know you more. Say, God, I want to know you more. Say, God, I want to know you more. Le maha shehete tebese. Mandi gradese. Manta paramashi andelemos. Ah. Say, God, I want to know you more. Dwell in my heart. Help me to understand your love. Help me to know your ways. So that I can be a Christian who glorifies your name, who pleases you. Not something that I do because, you know, people are doing it or I'm in the midst of some people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap unto the Lord Most High. Amen. We want to close our eyes right now. We have heard a lot about grace from Friday at the all night. And right through the service, we have heard many things about the grace of God. But this time, you just want to close your eyes and meditate on God's grace over your life. How the grace of God is able to locate a man that is condemned. And everybody thinks that this person has gone too far. But the grace of God is able to extend a, a hand onto the person and is able to fellowship, is able to reach out to this person and bring him up. Today, that same grace is available in this building. And God is knocking at the back of your door. He's saying, open up your heart unto the voice of grace. No matter where you are, there's no place that grace cannot locate you. You are in this place, you are in the house of God, and God is calling out to you. He's saying, open up your heart. I am here for you. He's calling out to you right now. You are here. You haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. His voice is coming out to you right now. He's saying, open up your heart. Just give him a chance. Give him a chance right now. If you are here like that, I just want you to lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. God is calling out to you. He's saying that today, I, I, I want to dine in your house. I, I want to be with you today. You have turned down my voice for so long, but today I want to come and fellowship with you. Just lift up your hand. God is calling out to you. His grace is reaching out to you right now. Don't deny the grace. Hallelujah. I want more oh, somebody just be on your feet right now as we worship God and thank God for this grace that is upon our lives. Just lift up your hands and be on your feet right now. Let's just be on our feet as we sing the song. The more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. 
Let's sing it one more time. Just one more time. I Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you this afternoon even for your word that has come unto us. Lord, we thank you for the abundance of your grace in the name of Jesus. We know that had it not been your grace, we would have been dead by now. When the enemy came in like a flood, even against our life, Lord, you lifted up a standard. When we fell ill, you were there with us. And by your grace, we were able to rise up from our sick bed. When we were crossing the road and the, 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 the vehicle almost knocked us down, by your grace, we were able to escape that accident. And we thank you and we bless you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise for everything that you have done. We say glory be unto your name in the most high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.